Happy to tell you that this week's legend of the game is former Bills kicker Steve Christie. Legend of the game is presented by the BFLO Store, the official retailer of the Buffalo Bills. And you can come meet Steve Christie at a signing at the BFLO Store in Williamsville on Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Enter to win a $250 BFLO Store gift card and a football signed by the team's all-time leading scorer. Enter at buffalobills.com slash BFLO. How is the pride of the Trafalgar High School up in Ontario doing today, Steve? Great. How are you? We're doing great. Um, it's funny because, you know, I watched most of your career, covered it as well, and I was reminded because I was, I was looking up your numbers. I wanted to see if I could remember your number of points with the Bills, and I got it, 1,011. But then I was also reminded that you are a William & Mary guy, just like uh, the head coach here, Sean McDermott, and your Hall of Fame head coach, obviously, Marv Levy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, we, uh, we like to call ourselves uh, the ultimate football factory. Um, <laughs> there's only a few of us floating around, but um, – yeah, we, uh, we're a pretty tight-knit group for a small school like that. Um, and obviously, we've been able to put a, quite a few effective uh, head coaches and, and coaches in the league. So that's been pretty neat to watch. Yeah, absolutely. When do, you get, when do you get in town for the festivities on Sunday? I am here. I'm at the Roy Croft Inn in East Aurora in your neck of the woods, uh, Steve. And um, You're half a mile. Wow. What, hey, we'll get, I'll have a, we can have a pop after the show. I'll come over. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm a predictable, if nothing, right? right. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So give, it, give us an idea. How did this, you know, um, I know that you've been, you come back on a regular basis. You're one of the guys uh, who does spend some time in Western New York. You come back and you, you go to games on a regular. I see you around uh, so much. What, what do you notice about uh, what's going on with this team, their run to the playoffs? What's it, you know, what do you equate this with maybe in some of the things that we went through in, in your career? Well, you know, I think everybody is somewhat surprised about where we are right now in the season. Um, every team, as you know, has so much hype at camp. You know, every team's going to go to the Super Bowl. But, you know, this team has really had a great run. And, um, yeah, th we had some up. We had some up. We were upset, you know, a few right. times this year. Uh, I mean, we went to London. We were at the Jags game and, you know, shaking our heads like everyone else, you know, after that one. And, uh, the New England game and obviously the opener against the Jets. I mean, we've had some games that we didn't anticipate those results. But at the end of the day, you know, you go back and you look at the Kansas City game. That was a must win for us. I think this this game this weekend against Dallas is another must win. We have to keep the momentum going. You know, you, you, we come up with these roadblocks and, um, you know, we have a knack of, of overcoming and uh, we're going to have to do it again Sunday uh, to keep us in the hunt. And, and as you, know, you guys talk about it every day, but you know, look at some of these teams in the AFC that weren't even in the conversation at the beginning, and now they're in the hunt just like us. So it's not it's not going to be easy to close out, and I'm sure you've already discussed the schedule. It's not easy either. So, I mean, yeah. you know, that Kansas City game was huge. Uh, I know you're yeah. very familiar with Tyler Bass. You've even spent some time with him uh, in the preseason and such. I don't know if you're aware of this, but this Dallas kicker is unbelievable. He's a 28-year-old rookie. Much like you, soccer background, and he's 30 for 30, Steve. Like, it's the first quarter of the game last week that the Cowboys are playing, and Mike McCarthy sends him out there for a 60-yard field goal, and he hits it like he's just walking through the park. Like, first of all, a head coach to have that confidence that early in the game to potentially sacrifice field position if he doesn't hit the 60-yarder, and then to put him out there, he had a 60 and a 59 yarder last week, along with a 50 yarder. That was all in the same game. He's eight for eight from 50 plus. This kid is unbelievable. I agree. Uh, what a phenomenal start. Obviously a fantastic athlete, a, a top round pick in the MLS and made that conversion to kicking footballs. And man, he's, he's just, it's incredible. Uh, you know, it's, I'm really curious to see how he does in the weather, but his leg is so strong that he'll overcome it. Um, and, you know, back to Tyler Bass, I think, you know, we're also lucky to have him. And I'll say this, not a lot of kickers want to come to Buffalo. A lot of guys don't want to go to Chicago. You know, uh, Chris Moore, my old roommate and teammate there, our punter, you know, we kind of laugh because Chris finally got into a dome in Atlanta 
and I didn't. So it's like maybe it's a Canadian thing. I don't know, but maybe yeah. Canadians <laughs> don't don't belong in domes. But yeah. you know, we always try to joke like, you know, even we look at the schedule during the season, we're like, okay, how many games do we get in a dome this year? Because we know that at home, it's not going to be easy. So you know, back to Bass, I think he's done a nice job for us here and in, in, in difficult, difficult situations, yeah. too. Is there anything substantially different these days? Because I know it's cyclical. Uh, it used to be that in your I think it was in your era where they made the change and said, listen, you're going to kick a new football right out of the box. Um, it, and before that, they let you guys have now they have kicking balls and that kind of thing where they can rub scuff them and scrub them, them and... scuff them up, uh, soften them up a little bit. Is there anything significantly or materially that has changed recently that we that has made a difference in your eyes? Well, I mean, the footballs look like they're they're worked in pretty well. I don't know how many. I don't know what the rule is this week on the footballs. Uh, yeah, yeah. It seems like it's ever changing. You know, like you like you said though, Steve. At one point there, Chris and I were not allowed in the equipment room. We right. couldn't see the footballs before the game. Um, but now they look like they're well worked in, which helps. It does help, yeah. and it certainly helps in, in bad weather. You know, it's so, uh, when they're out of the box, they're they're like really firm and slippery. The quarterbacks don't like them either. Um, at one point, when we were allowed to, you know, at least supervise the equipment staff breaking them in, Jim Kelly would come in and say, "Yeah, okay, these are okay." You know, he'd right. cross check and verify with us that we weren't breaking them in too much, and that they were ready to go ready to go for everyone. Last one, Steve, since you know how the confines of the stadium play in the weather, there's rain in the forecast. There's also wind. They're saying 15 to 18 miles an hour sustained, gusts up to 31. We know, for the most part, the scoreboard end is the tougher end to kick into for field goals. But maybe just lay out for us what the kickers can expect if there's going to be 15 to 18 sustained and 31 gusts. Well, I don't know if a lot of people there know this, but Steve was also my holder for a while. So he's been, he's heard the commentary out there. And at times when you even line up for an extra point, you look up to the goalposts and the flags are going in opposite directions. So if there is going to be any advantage at all, it should be for us. Uh, exactly. You know, you go out there and you're looking up there going, okay, you look at the flags for some kind of a cheat sheet as it is, and it gives you nothing. So really, that's where it's important to have a strong leg up here. And obviously, I think both kickers are going to do well with that. But I would like to think that our guys have the advantage. Yeah, and we know, too, going into the scoreboard in is a lot different than going into the tunnel in, that kind of thing. And that, um, yeah, it's, it's all different. Plus, in the, in the, the kicking game, I, I made the point, too, that a lot of it, particularly in the punt game, not so much in, our, in the end of the short snap with a kick, but the wind affects the long snap as well uh, in, a, in certain situations, too. And even the drop on the punt when, when the ball comes out of their hand, it, it's just uh, – and I know we've had multiple, multiple games in this building where there isn't a single punt that even gets fielded because it just, it's stupid to try and catch a ball that's knuckling down at 20 miles an hour out of the sky. Um, so it really cha- – I think – the kicking game is more susceptible to the win than the, than the offense or of either team. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that hundred percent. And that that's where, you know, if there's an opportunity for us to go out and kick or punt, we have to be better than, than Dallas this weekend or any team that comes in here. Again, that goes to our home field advantage and our familiarity with the stadium, the wins and the fact that they're not consistent and, you know, just to be ready for just about anything, and you're right, Steve, especially with the drop. I coach kids down in Florida and, you know, it gets windy down there and not quite the same as, as Buffalo, but it gets windy. And I, and I also remind them that it's not just the ball in the air after you hit it, it's your drop. And that does affect where it affects the snap. It affects where you catch the ball and how you proceed into your steps and, and making good contact. So again, that should be our, our advantage. Steve, thanks for the time. Good luck getting the crowd fired up on Sunday, and I know fans will be excited to see you out at the BFL store, BFLO store on Saturday. Thanks for giving us some time. Always.